To deepen our picture of organic molecular structure, we need to take account of the fact that atoms and molecules are in motion. Atoms are translating, bonds are rotating, so on and so forth, and each of these conformational changes, each of these motions, is associated with the change in the energy of the molecule. The goal of a conformational analysis is to show how molecular energy changes with a specific conformational change, a specific bond rotation, for example. In this video series, we're going to look at both acyclic and cyclic molecules and see how conformational changes lead to both structural changes and energy changes. And we're going to look at some new ways of visualizing organic molecules, especially focusing on three-dimensional perspectives that really highlight how a conformational change affects molecular structure. And so it's going to become important to be able to visualize molecules in three dimensions. And we'll talk about tools to do this that don't necessarily involve you racking your brain to think in three dimensions. There are computational and physical tools available now to help you visualize in three dimensions without too much effort. In addition, we're going to return to ideas about orbital interactions and steric repulsion that we've seen already to help explain how conformational change affects the energies of molecules. We'll begin with an introduction to conformational analysis, focusing on the ways we visualize conformation, how conformation changes, and how energy comes into the picture, and take a look at some important acyclic molecules, molecules lacking ring structures. And the first point to understand about conformation is that atoms and molecules are in motion. Atoms and molecules move. We can visualize this using a simulation of the molecular dynamics for a simple molecule like propyl bromide, shown here. This simulation shows propyl bromide undergoing conformational change over a period of only two nanoseconds. Notice that the hydrogen atoms are moving rapidly, while the much larger bromine is moving more slowly, but we can see vibrations, translations, and rotations about bonds that change the relative positions of those bonds. We're going to focus primarily in this series of videos on bond rotations. And some questions we have about these motions are, first of all, what structures that we see in this picture can be considered stable in the sense of existing for a definite amount of time? How do these motions affect the potential energy of the molecule, and how does the potential energy depend on atomic positions? And the third question, related to the second question, is what fundamental phenomena are responsible for this dependence? To some degree, we've seen these already, but we're going to really see these phenomena come into the spotlight as deep explanations of the dependence of potential energy on conformation. To help put these types of motions into context, it helps consider different levels of organic structure. And we think about organic structure at three levels that I refer to as the three C's of organic structure. Each level is associated with a particular type of isomerism, the idea that two molecules can share some structural properties but have differences in their structural properties as well. If you've seen isomerism before, you'll recognize these different levels and their associated types of isomers. The broadest level is what's termed the constitution or the connectivity of a molecule. This refers to how the atoms are connected to each other within a molecule without regard for their spatial positions. And constitution is usually depicted using diagrams like this, which imply no spatial information in the way they're put together. This is built into the fact that we would expect each carbon in this structure to be tetrahedral, right? Four electron pair domains around each carbon, but this cross-type structure obscures that three-dimensional information. Molecules with different connectivity are referred to as constitutional isomers. As an example of a constitutional isomer of the molecule shown here, we could imagine putting the bromine at a different position and leaving the other four carbons intact with hydrogens to bring them up to an octet of electrons. The blue molecule is the same as the black molecule in a sense. They both have the same molecular formula, but they differ in constitution, the way the atoms are connected to each other. Configuration, which we'll discuss in detail in a later lesson, includes both the connectivity information and the spatial positions of atoms within a molecule without regard to relatively easy, quote unquote, relatively low barrier processes like bond rotations. Configurational isomerism involves leaving the constitution the same but changing the spatial positions of atoms. And in fact, the same molecule in the first case can be used to illustrate configurational isomerism. If we exchange the positions of the bromine and hydrogen that I'm circling here, we end up with a molecule that is distinct from the original, with the bromine in a different position from where it is in the original molecule. These two molecules differ in configuration 
but we can see they have the same constitution and the same molecular formula. So they're configurational isomers. Finally, the lowest level of organic structure is conformation. And conformation refers to the spatial positions of atoms like in configuration, but these spatial positions with respect to easy low barrier processes like rotation about single bonds. Configuration doesn't worry about these relatively easy processes, but conformation does. Conformational isomers have the same configurations. In other words, by rotating around bonds and so on and so forth, we could overlay two conformational isomers, but they differ in conformation. To generate a conformational isomer of the molecule shown here, for example, we could rotate around this bond so that the groups attached to the front carbon move. The resulting structure is not superimposable on the original, so these are isomers. However, they have identical configuration and identical connectivity. They differ only with respect to a conformational change. This makes them conformational isomers. You'll also hear the term conformers used to refer to structures that are related by a conformational change. One last point to make about the levels of organic structure is that the way they're organized here correlates with the energy differences between isomers as well. So constitutional isomers have grossly different properties, right? This molecule is completely different from the molecule with the bromine in the two position. Constitutional isomers have different physical properties, different reactivity, so on and so forth. Configurational isomers are somewhat more similar. They have more similar energies, more similar reactivity, more similar properties. Conformational isomers are, to an extent, even more similar because the processes that interconvert conformational isomers are, are relatively subtle and, and relatively low impact. They don't cause large changes to the energy of the molecule. Nonetheless, these changes can be important in thinking about molecular structure, and so we're going to zero in on this level first and talk about configuration in a later lesson.